So welcome, Perennial Pride listeners. Thanks for joining me, and I have a special guest today on today's podcast. You may remember him, Brian McCloskey from Revisionist Wealth. Go back to episode six, where we talk a little bit about where retirement is failing. It's an experiment. So just some fascinating nuggets that, that Brian was able to share. We talked through some of it. We're going to go a little deeper today. So Brian, welcome back onto the show. Tom, really excited to be here with you again. I always enjoy talking and of course with your listeners, because I'm certain that we're, we're going to come up with some good nuggets today to share with them. Yeah. No, it's especially in this day when we're recording, it's a little chaotic in the world. Right. We have a looming or already current day recession going on and who knows what's coming down the pike, more rate rate hikes, et cetera. So, you know, this the concept of a soft landing is probably past this. We're probably, you know, get buckle in here. So but there are people who are, you know, in, in a lot of baby boomers still sort of migrating towards quote unquote retirement and people maybe evaluating life differently and maybe shifting gears, you know. We always talk about retirement, maybe a different definition, maybe uh, getting into something you just love to do, <laughs> maybe you're shifting careers or, or whatnot. But you know, we're going to talk a little bit how we how we can maximize retirement and live uh, a much more fulfilling life, right? So this is kind of where where I want to direct our attention and how we might be able to do that. So thanks for kind of coming on here to share a little bit. You're you're welcome, and, I'll, and I'm just going to drop something right there on the table. Um, I think back to conversations I've even had as recently as yesterday and even this week, just with folks that are approaching retirement and we've already done some planning. I got to tell you, the thing that allows folks to across the board in, in all the conversations I have, the thing that allows them to not be worried about what's going on right now in the world, because there are a lot of folks that are worried, but the, what allows them to not be worried is that they know where their income's coming from. Currently, if they're still in the last year or two of working, so I'm thinking of a conversation like that, but also if they're already retired and they're like, we know where this check, that check, this check, that check's coming from. We know we're going to turn on another check in a few years. We know that we're delaying Social Security for another year or two, if that's the case. But it's all about income. It's all about income. I have a feeling that's where our conversation is going to go today. Uh, but, but, but knowing where cash flow is coming from on a dependable basis takes a, I'm going to use a, a technical term here crap ton of stress off individual off folks shoulders that's right yeah I, we get whether you're working a job or uh, you're running a successful business that's that's creating significant cash flow to your point like what what happens when that stops right how do we you know all the money we're accumulating how do you actually turn that into income streams that are reliable, don't keep you up at night, all those sorts of things. So this is kind of where I want to direct a little bit more attention because we get so used to it. You know, people working in jobs, the paycheck just comes, keeps on coming in every week or two weeks, whatever the rhythm is, and you get used to that. So how do you how do you replicate that in the distribution phase of our lives? A very different sort of world. And then maybe even down the road, how it helps to preserve our wealth to the next generation, which we won't touch as much on that today. But, you know, it obviously relates. We got to have our money do multiple things and think about them and plan for them that way. Or, you know, you may not have many options at the, at the time you need it. So, you know, with that note, uh, Brian, like, you know, when we think about paychecks or income streams, what do, what do most people think about? Uh, what, what is the natural uh, types of things that people equate to when you think about, you know, incomes or paychecks in retirement? First thing they think of is social security. They love the fact that they're going to be able to turn on a check. Now there, and, but now there's sometimes there's stress and there's, you have to wrap your head around some of the mechanics of social security. It is a government program. Government programs are definitely not simple. I mean, there's the rules around social security are above, there's like over 2000 rules and tons of different time, ways to claim. And there's things there, but they, they know almost to a T the social security is going to be a part of their, their equation. And quite frankly, the social security program is under stress and could it change during baby boomers retirements? I mean, it, they're saying it could, it might, uh, but I also don't see those checks going away. So I will say, you know, coming into or towards retirement, you know, folks depend on social security. And what is social security? It's basically a paycheck uh, replacement program, right? It's essentially a paycheck replacement program. And and, and the psychology that I see with folks when they're wrapping their head around this retirement thing is I don't think we really appreciate, and this is especially true with folks that had dependable 
W-2 employee type jobs or even executive type jobs or, you know, things of that nature where like they knew what their salary was for that year and they expected their salary to go up. And they're hoping that when inflation happens, they want that salary to go up even more. Like they, it's hard for folks to wrap their head because they don't have to think about it while they're working. They're just depending on going to their job and, and having that paycheck come in every two weeks. You know, if the, if the company's healthy, if they have no threats to their position, they're just, they expect to be working the next year. They don't wrap their head around the fact that aside, on top of Social Security, because that usually doesn't replace the amount of income for their entire, to run their entire life, their standard of living. We can go down, we'll talk about that a little bit. They don't really wrap their head around what they have to do to create the checks on top of Social Security so they can keep paying the bills. And that's where you go from this dependability, this dependability that most folks have around their paycheck as they're working to when they start to crunch the numbers. Well, wait a second. You know, I'm going to have a portion coming in from Social Security. That portion is going to be a little bit lower than they expected because of Part B, Medicare premiums and taxes and whatnot. How do they create the other piece? And then, then, then you start to move towards that. And you're like, well, okay, Wall Street told me just to take it out slowly, right? And somehow it's supposed to let, uh, last the rest of my life. But there's also <laughs> plenty of scientists, actuarial scientists who study how to create paychecks from your, your assets that say taking money out of, a, of, of an account that goes up and down for an uncertain time because we don't know how long we're going to live right? Maybe sometimes some of us have the, have the potential to live almost as long as we worked. That's an interesting point we can go down the road of. There, there's potential challenges to that. And, and you have the variability of sticking your hand in a cookie jar, is an analogy I use, sticking your hand in a cookie jar that you've never stuck your hand into before. And then what if that cookie jar was a million dollars and then overnight, basically overnight, meaning between January 1st of this year and October where we are, what if that cookie jar went from a million dollars to $700,000 just because that's what the market did? It becomes pretty stressful for a person to stick their hand into that cookie jar. So there's, there, there's a lot of personal reflection that ends up happening or that it should happen where, where folks really find out for themselves, how dependable do we want our paychecks to be? Uh, and, and when they start answering for that, that for themselves and they say, wow, we, we definitely want a little more dependability than just sticking our hand in the cookie jar. That's where we get into the fact that there's different tools that can be used to complement the normal 401k IRA type investments that really add to satisfaction and success in retirement. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and you know, obviously we talked a little bit about the last time we spoke around the retirement experiment. And, and obviously you see most corporations, they used to help Outside of Social Security, obviously, that that has evolved into something much bigger than it was originally intended to be. And so now as it becomes a massive safety net for a, a significant portion of Americans. But, you know, prior to that, everyone had, you know, these pensions, right? The, the, their companies would take care of you. And now it's very few and far between other than maybe government uh, positions. Right. But most corporations have either gotten rid of it or on the have frozen them and, and moving away and, and shifted that risk to the individual. Stay right and there. That's fantastic. Stay right there. And you actually said a word that I was going to bring up if you didn't bring it up. What are those companies doing? They're recognizing the risk of having to pay people for 20 to 30 plus years paychecks where those folks are not working anymore. That's what a pension is. You're not working for the company anymore. They stuffed money into a, a a pot for you, so to speak, and then they promise you a paycheck, a pension, <laughs> and retirement for the rest of your life. But what don't they know? They don't know how long you and or your spouse are going to live. That's a risk to that program. And what have they been able to do over the past 15 years, probably 20 years, but it's definitely accelerated more recently. They've been able to put, throw that risk back over to you. They're like, we don't want it anymore. We're going to shut down the pension. We're going to freeze the pension. No new people. That, that's at least you know valuable for the folks that had it. Or sometimes they rip it all apart and they send out lump sums. They're like, you just do it on your own. They're trying to get rid of that risk because there is risk there. The good news is, and this comes back to one of the tools that you can use, and we'll, we'll say the name of the tool. And, and I, I definitely want people to just be okay with the name and figure it out. But there are tools out there and there's actuarial science that is actually built to help people create their own pension-like income streams because there are companies that are stronger than the pension companies that have the, the knowledge and the ability and the, the wherewithal and the hedging 
to take on that risk, that risk of folks living longer. And what we got to do is we just got to get people familiar and okay with the word annuity. I meant to write it down and hold it up here for us. I was going to be using marketing, like hold it up. I, I just didn't get a chance to do that. But we just got, you have to get familiar and okay with the word annuity because it's fascinating that that word and, and some, some of the negative connotation around that word is earned by the way that these accounts are handled. But it's fascinating that that word is just usually lands in a negative fashion. But what's really interesting is that in some form or fashion, many annuities, because the technical definition does describe lifetime income, like income for the rest of a person's life. A lot of folks forget the fact that something that they love, we talked about earlier, Social Security. Social Security is essentially annuity. You know, pensions that they may or may not still have, they're essentially annuities. Um, and, and this word, this word, you just got to get familiar with it because quite frankly, when you get into the math and the science of how money flows differently in retirement compared to when people were saving for retirement, um, there are better tools or different tools that can improve outcomes. And one of those tools is an annuity. And that doesn't mean every single annuity is good. And it doesn't mean rush out and go get one. And you definitely want to know what the heck it is and how it works. And quite frankly, not be oversold because they have they, they, some, of the, some of their bad rap around them is they literally were overpromised. Uh, even when there are very valuable guarantees inside something, they were overpromised. Um, and insurance, some insurance companies are culpable, right? Because why? Because they make money when, when people send money to them and, and handle the risk. So they're culpable for some of those oversell sales. But you just got to get familiar with that word annuity because when you, if you don't have that in your toolbox, you definitely have a headwind in front of you in regards to creating satisfaction, creating dependability. Uh, that, that could be missing from your equation if you haven't at least explored you know, the way that an annuity, especially something with dependable income built off of it, uh, can play a role as a portion and a complementary piece of a person's overall portfolio. Yeah, and that's it. it, it and that's why for people listening on this podcast, they're open-minded around at least understanding the truth of it. Just like anything else, right? Whether it's investments, insurance, there's not one size fits all and not all tools are the same, right? It's not like a commodity. So it, it takes some energy to learn it and and this is what I want to talk a little bit more about, because obviously in the financial world, there's so much focus on rates of return and net worth. That's usually what people kind of get have gotten ingrained to say, this is how I build wealth and think about wealth. But the reality is we can't eat net worth. We have to live with cash flow. Right. There's this concept. I can't yeah. eat equity. I need to to consume and create cash flow. And to your point, like, how do I do it, especially in retirement? Like. And it's something that's less stressful, right? That's the last time I want to be stressed out when I'm maybe uh, retired, doing a different job or traveling, whatever it is. And I got to worry about all of this. This shifting of risk is really putting a lot of pressure on a lot of people to figure that out. And people aren't trained for it, right? I hear it all the time. People are like, I don't know what to do with this. And I don't, I don't know what I'm doing in my 401k. And I'm just hoping to get to some number that magically is my head, and then I'll be okay. Whatever it is, million dollars, two million dollars. Now I'm okay. Well, then how are we going to use that? So, so tell us in the world of annuities and two point. Like, there's a lot of financial terms that people just have such a negative connotation to towards. Annuities is definitely one. Yep. But you know, tell us a little bit just generally, like what are some types of annuities to get people grounded on what we're talking about, how to think about them. Yeah, that's a great question. So if, if I could go back in time and there's been a lot of folks because of that in my in our world that have said this, if we go back in time, we change the name of this account um, or at least separate out the different types, because there are it is like I said, the definition of annuity formally is a lifetime stream of income. But these accounts can mean a, a CD type account for three to five years. These accounts could mean a variable type account that has like mutual sub funds in, inside of it to go up and down and, and quite frankly, heftier fees typically, even though there are roles for those accounts sometimes, but heftier fees. And then they could, they could mean accounts that create lifetime income tomorrow that you, that will last as long as you do accounts where you keep the, the balance of the asset on your records, just in case something happens to you. And then accounts where you completely shifted over to the insurance company 
to get stronger income. So, so think about that last 30 seconds where I just described all these different things. That's annuities, right? That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem, the fact that there's so many different types. And it's so easy for us nowadays, us meaning just us in general and people, to go and lambaste something because maybe they had a bad experience. Or maybe mm. their maybe their grandma, maybe their mom set up an annuity and you know she she passed away two years later and she didn't have a contingency on the back end. The kids are like, what the heck? Because they weren't part of the process. But what gets buried in in amongst all those negative kind of uh, stories is what gets buried in Google sometimes is the kids that are like, wow, you know, mom lived till she was 95 and this annuity kept paying her, you know, ever since she was 62 or wow. And, and she, and so that allowed her not to touch her retirement accounts and we have an inheritance now or like, wow, like this account, like, like let dad feel really good about spending money because he had an extra $2,000 a month coming in on top of his social security. Like those stories get buried because of like, there's negative stories and like folks are like, yeah, that's terrible. And yeah, you should only stay in the market. Fact of the matter is, if I kind of bring this back for folks, fact of the matter is when we're saving for retirement, it's just mechanical effort. Meaning like, it's just, it's just work, save, try to enjoy life. Can't wait till we retire so we can do our hobbies and you know whatever that retirement is for folks. It's mechanical. But when we get into creating the income from those accounts, we gain efficiency. We gain the capability to maintain our investments longer and allow them to stay invested longer when we use a tactical approach, right? Like it's mechanical over here. We're just working, 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 saving, saving, saving. But it changes on this side because it becomes much more tactical because we have to deal with taxes. We have to deal with how we're creating those checks, mm -hmm. how long. And if, you, and if we approach it from a tactical perspective and we, and we realize we, we should understand annuities better because they help us on the tactical side or they could help us. That's where actually we find that people have more success and more confidence and they just feel better about it because they know they have a plan when the rest of the world is complaining about their accounts going down 25 to 30%. Yeah. And it's, it goes back to the, the, the idea of uh, maximizing the efficiency of your, your assets, right? Because, you know, we, we can get so enamored back to the to trying to catch a net worth right now we feel wealthy well you're only as wealthy as how much income you can enjoy <laughs> every year and so how do i coordinate the different assets to maximize income reduce taxes and fees so i get so it really gets simple like how much more can i enjoy without causing me massive stress over time and you know that's i guess part of the challenge is that some of these annuities can get very complicated and cause some challenges. I mean, that's why I guess they don't even offer them a lot in, in like say a normal 401k at some point, right? Maybe people assume that they're just too complicated to understand, so I gotta stay away from them. Well, you have to you have to consider too, I'm gonna kind of pull the, pull the curtain back on the industry here. Um, there are plenty of folks that make a lot of money. A lot of times their clients can't quantify because they don't know how to, but there's a lot of folks that make a lot of money with what's called asset under management fees. That if they were to say to a client, send 200 grand or 300 grand of an allocation over to an annuity and they don't control that annuity, they're basically sending money away from themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They're sending money, they're reducing their fees that they're charging. Like, let's just talk about that. Million dollar account, one or one and a half percent fee. So I'll say 1% fee. That, that advisor is being paid $10,000 that year to manage that account. And you might have a client saying, well, what are we doing for income? And that advisor might say just, well, we'll just take it out of this account, you know, maybe 4% ish a year and blah, 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 to drip it out slowly. Cause that advisor is like, I keep making 10 grand off of this account. But if that advisor says, but if the client comes to them and says, you know, what about an annuity for lifetime income? What if I like, at, like take a piece of that? I heard maybe I can take a piece of that and, and, and have it doing something else in a different account that I can turn on a paycheck for life from. And maybe like $300,000, well, that advisor, if they're not aware, or if they're not being a true proponent, I'll, I'll use the word fiduciary, because they do call themselves a fiduciary, even though they might not talk about lifetime income, which is a complete, complete disaster. Um, but th they might say, no, 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 we'll just keep taking the, the little drippets out because that keeps the money under that advisor's mm -hmm. uh, fee structure, as opposed to sending three grand a year away you know, in fees with the $300,000 to an annuity. So in many, in some cases, 
Advisors don't even bring it up because it hurts the advisor's pocket. Is that really doing what's, what's best for a client? I mean, we can go down a rabbit hole there. I'll come back out of my rabbit hole there because I was starting to throw some numbers around. But, but to your point, like some plans don't offer. They're trying to force plans to offer 401ks and stuff like that. But then you get into the fact that, you know, then the client might not realize all the different types of annuity type accounts that are available. So they kind of get hamstrung into one. Um, there's just a lot of moving pieces. And that's why you and I have talked about this before. I like to, to help folks understand a lot of these concepts in plain English. Might might have might have used some not so plain English here, you know, throughout the conversation up to this point. I apologize for that. But it's really important to take this tactical piece of of stra- this tactical strategy and, and how to create income. It's really important to just help folks recognize the, the moving pieces, understand it in plain English, so they can really work with their advisors. Say, you know what, I do want some more dependability. How can we best achieve that? I do want a plan to reduce taxes. How can I best achieve that? I do want to make sure my spouse is okay and has strong income even if I disappear. You know, and how can best achieve that? And quite frankly, annuities and life insurance, like you talked about before, it has to be on the table as a conversation point, whether people use it or not, right? But it has to be on the table to really help people, you know, and create the best outcome when it comes to creating income and having a terrific retirement. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So, you know, so one thing that it always comes up to, and, you know, you get these rules of thumb or, you know, the conventional wisdom around things, which you know, I, I've i kind of grown to to recognize that when, when something is the typical or everyone's doing it, I got to say, well, maybe the opposite is, is better. <laughs> if we've been trained to kind of follow the herd, but you know, when we think about annuities and, and you started with Social Security, well, we, we're starting that essentially from the day we start working, right? We're putting money into an annuity that we're eventually going to get. Correct. So I often hear from people like, I shouldn't, when should I start? Like, when should I be considering an annuity? And, you know, isn't that just for old people to create income? When, when should I even start? Like, how do, how do I, how do you help me answer that question? Uh, wow, that's a terrific question. I mean, and fair point too. I mean, when you're when you're a wage earner, uh, you are actually you're contributing, and your employer is contributing on your behalf to Social Security. Um, so t- sometimes from day one, you're you're adding to an income stream for yourself. So that's helpful. Uh, but typically, I say when folks are kind of getting late forties into their fifties, and you're looking at that last, if we were to break the timeline of working into a couple phases. You have your you have your early phase when you're either just starting to work in your career or trying to figure out your career. Then you have the middle phase where you're really starting to to, to gain momentum, but you're also like dealing with your family stuff. And then you get towards the, that last phase, whatever that timeline is for a person, 10 years, 15 years. That's typically the earlier in that phase that you can at least start understanding this stuff. It may, may, may or may not make sense for a person at that time, but the earlier in that phase, you can start to understand this stuff uh, and understand that that the rules change when you get to your destination, that the cash flow direction changes when you get to your destination, meaning retirement, instead of coming into the account and now you're pulling out. Usually at that third, that third phase of the, the building section, the accumulation section, late 40s, early 50s, um, definitely as you're approaching 60s, because you're getting much closer, you got to just start wrapping your head around this stuff. You have to. And you should. It's, it's in your best interest to really do it. Whether a person uses one or not, it's in their best interest. And then I'll add one more piece there. If it does make sense for a person to take advantage of an annuity that might create lifetime income. And there are there, there are ones that you can set up now, meaning like you can set up while you're working and then turn it on later and have flexibility to turn it on later. One of the analogies I use there is if that's solving a goal for a client, that's what they want. If they like the dependability of it, if they're okay with, with how it works and if there's any costs inside and what the costs are. There's always costs. You just have to understand what they are. Um, there's always costs in your 401k and your IRAs too. You just have to understand what they are. But um, you know, if you're if they're okay with that, then and an, an annuity with lifetime income typically is like an apple tree. The sooner you put it in the ground and let it start to grow, the riper the fruit's going to be in the future, right? So that's where, and that doesn't mean start one when you're 30 years old. I'm still kind of focused on that last phase. But when a person starts to wrap their head in there around and they realize it's right for them. It, it, it's it's they always want to start it yesterday. It's kind of like life insurance. They always wish they started it five years ago. Once they realize how it works. Um, so hopefully that's an answer for your question with a couple pictures. Yeah, no, it's helpful. And to your point, everyone's situation is going to be unique. 
And and so, but that's why at least entertaining and having the conversations a plan for them, because to your point, some of them take some time, depending on how you're planning to utilize them and where they fit into your broader strategy and plan, that some of them you can't just create out of thin air and start, right? Some of them need some maturation and growth over time and, and keeping them the longer you have them, the better it is. And and so it depends, right? But at least getting it into the equation and discussing like wh- where they can fit, because you often hear enough, like you can hear for a lot of t- some typical uh, advice from certain companies to say, you should never even consider it. And it's just, to me, it's just, and, uh, and they're fiduciaries, quote unquote. <laughs> Like to me, it just it's just amazing, and you know, to me, at least I have the open, honest conversation to share what it is. So you know whether it's a good fit or where it could fit, based on what you're trying to achieve is is key, and it takes some some effort, right? You have to kind of be open minded to learning it. Um, so it is it is valuable, but it's it, so I, I do want to shift gears a little bit. I know our time is kind of coming to a close here. The the one thing that I often heard, and I don't, I'm not going to get too detailed into the te- te- technical aspects of it. You know, in terms of you talk about the actuarial science, because what I I'm always enamored with these things around finance, you know, they talk about you save a bunch of money. It's, you know, the market's going to earn X percent and you keep on plowing. And it's going to turn into X dollars someday, a million dollars. Well, you know, and they almost feel like it's a guarantee <laughs> like that's going to happen. It's just math. Well, we know that's not a guarantee. So when I look at things like annuities and the, the ability for some of them to create paychecks, right? What does that do for people in the retirements in terms of stress? And maybe even I've heard a concept and you helped me with this, that people actually on paper, they're, they're incentive to live longer because they want to make the most out of what they put their money into. In real right? life, they live longer. Here, like, I got to stay healthy. I want to you know, make the most out of it. I put my money here. I'm going to get all I can out of it. What, what do you say to that? In real life, they live longer. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but in real life, they live longer. It's, it's, there, there's statistics that say folks that have stronger, dependable lifetime no, income, and, and that is created on top of Social Security with pensions that are there and then annuity guaranteed in like guaranteed income from annuity type accounts they statistically have live longer when and that's what the, that's what the insurance companies look at and, and a lot of that comes from when they've dug into that a lot of it comes from less stress because you know where money's coming from stronger income allows them to maintain or improve their standard of living so it keeps their health up mm. the, you know, the ability to pay for health expenses in retirement in a stronger fashion because they're not afraid to reduce you know, their accounts and potentially run out. There's just a, a, a handful of moving pieces there. It's just, it's, the statistics are there, they do. I'm not gonna say that's why a should, you know, person shouldn't just say, I wanna live longer, buy an annuity. But like, if, if you want to live longer and you're plan, you, know, you, you have longevity on your side, you're trying to keep yourself healthy, we never know our expiration date. Uh, but you know, if you wanna hedge for the ability to create stronger income off a portion of your assets, you can't outlive, so that you can actually have your other money continue to, to work and grow for you and, and just have a, a more tactical approach that has a, a better opportunity for success. You have to be exploring this concept of annuities. You have to, you have to. Yeah, and that's why. And so we'll end it with there. That's a really good one because it, the risk as we move into the later stages of, of life and maybe shifting gears to maybe working less, whatever the situation is for you, that new risks will arise health, longevity, all those things that you mentioned, taxes and, you know, trying to manage market gyrations. I mean, these are all stresses and additional things that, you know, maybe we're not as uh, uh, acute while we're building our wealth, but we got to sort of face these things head on. They're, they're serious things. They're, they're potentially scary things, but that's why you got to talk to people like Brian, who's a retirement expert, like to help think through these things and they become less scary because of it. You got to face them and 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 take ownership of them, and and then evaluate options that may fit you and what you're trying to do for your family and for uh, for the impact you want to have even further down the road when you're not here. So, Brian, always appreciate your your expertise and you know I, I, and and honesty around these things. There's no magic bullet for any of this stuff, um, but you need some good experts like you and others that are just sharing good wisdom and education to help people make the best decisions for themselves. So thanks a lot for joining me today. Tom, you're very welcome. So glad to be here with you and your audience. All right. Take care.
Thanks for joining me on this episode today. I really am grateful for you as listeners to the Cranial Pride podcast. I hope you're getting some tremendous value out of it and hopefully pushing you along your journey to financial freedom. You know, I put this podcast together really to help sort of help you get more educated around your finances so that you feel empowered to live the life that you really want. And if you like the content that you heard today or watched, then I would encourage you to go to my website, perennialpride.com. There's tons of other content there. And you can access my book, Wealth Beyond the Numbers. You can buy it there on my website. It's a aggregation of a lot of great tips and tools I've learned to not only build my wealth in my, my accounts, but build wealth in my life and abundance and joy and something that has a lot of my experiences in the journey that I've been on personally. Hopefully that can be also of value to you as you sort of move forward. So thanks again for being a Cranial Pride listener and we'll see you on the next episode.